some major shakeups by the RFK Jr. campaign. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. A new list has come out of potential vice presidential picks from RFK Jr. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of these for you. Uh, first, and what the biggest headline grabbing one is Aaron Rodgers, the current NFL quarterback. Uh, what is it for the New York Jets, right? For the yeah, Jets? Four, okay. four downs for the Jets. Four downs for the Jets. Uh, I believe, is he injured? Is he still yeah. on the roster? He'll, yeah, he'll, he'll, okay. he says he's coming back. Okay, he said he's coming back. Yeah, so, busted his anyway, we'll um, or whatever. Aaron Rodgers uh, is, is big there on the list. Obviously, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has spoken extensively about RFK Jr. on the Joe, Joe Rogan experience and elsewhere, um, aligning with him, uh, particularly on his views on vaccines, but in general, kind of being a relative, I guess, what, skeptic, I guess you could say, of illegal. Elites. The other person that really uh, shot out to me was Jesse Ventura, which I actually think Ryan would be a smarter move. And I'm curious what you think. Given his past political experience, I mean, he was literally the governor of the state of Minnesota. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, you can love, you can hate Jesse. I kind of find him a, frankly, like inspirational figure. Like this is a guy who used and had his, um, he used and had his personal like popularity with his very anti-establishment politics gets himself elected governor and then becomes like a real fo a voice and force against a lot of people and the establishment kind of in the interim 20 years. He was strong on the Iraq war and all that, for example. So that would be an interesting case. And I think it would align more with RFK Jr. He's, he's very he's very yeah. RFK Jr. I'd love to right. hear I'd I'd love to hear their unvarnished conversations oh, like yeah, they, we're we're only getting the stuff that uh, that that they're willing to put out there. Uh, Ventura is fascinating. He like went to moved to Mexico basically and became mm -hmm. a hermit down on the beach like the kind of uh, the kind of lifestyle that everybody dreams of like uh, he's just I'm out of here man I'm, I'm <laughs> done. Um, the the other ones they list Rand Paul. Hard to imagine him actually accepting that. Yeah. I mean, he's a uh, Republican. Tulsi Gabbard. That I could see. That'd be uh, interesting. Andrew Yang was uh, thrown out there. Mike uh -huh. Rowe. Mike Rowe. See, uh, Mike Rowe, actually, that'd be kind of smart, I, your, I, I think. Your is. guy, Tony Robbins. Uh, so he's not my guy. Let's be it's make Trisha it Lindsay. Clear. That said, uh, Tony Robbins, I think, would be smart just because Tony Robbins is incredibly popular and famous, and everybody knows who he is. So there is like a name ID element to this. Uh, I don't know much about Tony Robbins, at least in the... My, I feel like he was a big thing when I was a kid, like maybe 20 years ago. That's when his tapes and his CDs and all of that were really taking over. I don't know how well his business is doing all this. I, I, I assume it's still pretty well. I still wonder what would have happened in a world where RFK Jr. had, in, instead, he just has this like reflexive, uh, ultra hawkish approach to Israel mm -hmm. uh, that you know, came out since October 7th and, mm -hmm. and that's, and he's dug in on it. Like that, that's who, that's who he yeah, is. Yeah, that's who he is. That's but, what he believes. But, you know, he, he flows out of, you know, RFK senior, he ran as an anti-war candidate mm -hmm. in, in 1968. What if instead of that position, he had a different position where he was against the war and you combined his ability to pick up the Joe Rogan podcast world, which is tens of millions of people. Millions of people with the disaffected under 30 people. And he started having Bernie sized rallies. Um, it, th that, that political coalition is a, is a force that can get you to a third of the vote in states, Look, like, which makes you then a, a major yeah. party contender. I think the only explanation is he believes it. Right, uh, he's not right. a stupid man. But, but let's like, say he did. Yeah. Could you, could, am I crazy? Is there a path no, I, I think you're right. where he's at, he could get right. to 30, 35% See, the thing percent is, on What that? I think he would need to do is he doesn't even need to be like a full blown like left poster. He mm -hmm. just needs to be like, I would run the war differently. And I feel like that would be enough for a lot of these people. Just so if you were to co op yeah, I mean, think about Obama. I mean, let's be honest, like he was anti-war, but in the midst of the actual 08 yeah. campaign, he wasn't really anti-war. Right. He had the whole good war right. rhetoric, and then we all know how he ran, but enough people, even idiots like me, were like, yeah, I hate the Iraq war, or like, let's go. You know, I was like a teenager. Well, yeah. I think a lot of people would be feeling exactly the same way. Um, the thing, so I, I wanna just like spend time on Aaron Rodgers specifically. Mm -hmm. Let's put this up there. Adam, uh, what is this man's name? Adam Schefter? I know, okay, NFL people, please don't judge me. I don't watch the NFL. I know this man is like a famous person in that world. He says, Aaron Rodgers is officially on the RFK Jr. shortlist to be his running mate on the independent, independent financial or presidential ticket as he confirms in ESPN and first reported there by the New York Times. Aaron, okay, from a pure political popularity perspective, I don't think it would be bad because 
NFL is the only thing that actually unites this country in terms of viewership. It's literally the only well, mass He's a pretty polarizing figure in the in is the he though? Of the NFL. Okay, so that's my question: Is how many people are even familiar with his like vaccine Epstein views on it, Pat McAfee, as opposed to I mean, how old he's like forty years he, old? He's been a he, look. I don't watch the NFL, and I know who freaking Aaron Rodgers is, right? right? Like he is the level of pop culture name ID, which is very very difficult to beat, as opposed to all these other people on here. I'm not saying he would be a good vice president. I don't honestly know anything about him other than listening to him on the Joe Rogan experience, but. If your goal is to just, I mean, get the bros out there, get name ID, mm -hmm. you know, go viral and all of that and just get awareness, I don't think it would be a bad move, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he, he did cause a lot of drama within the NFL and on his team or, uh, with his, like, refusal to take the vaccine and sort of, like, lying about it. And, like, well, I don't, okay, like, so this is the other thing. Ish. What did he say again? He said he was immunized. Uh, right. I don't yeah, want yeah, to litigate yeah. all this again. I mean, he, he says he I has was, no allergy. I mean, I believe him, you know? Also, I, I, I would like at the time, even at the time, yeah. I was like, look, if the guy says he had COVID, like, right. what do you, what do you care? That's right. You, you do actually have just mm. as much immunity from getting COVID than, than taking the vaccine. But yeah, it, it, it was a controversial position. Right, that's right. So that, that's, that's all I'm saying. Even though the NFL is a, the one thing that our monoculture is still like agreed mm -hmm. upon. Um, but the other, the other fun part is I, I like this about him. Apparently he's at an ayahuasca retreat. Yeah. Let's put that up there on the screen. Uh, it broke, the news broke of him, uh, being on the list while he was on an ayahuasca retreat Down in, Costa, in Rica. Costa Rica. I believe this is uh, his second or at least not his first visit down to Costa Rica for his ayahuasca retreat, which he has spoken about publicly. So. He, cr he credits, yeah. uh, ayahuasca with kind of opening his opening his mind and mm -hmm. changing the way that he sees the world, which I hope that doesn't discredit it to everybody else who's like, sees, <laughs> sees what, sees where he's gone with it. I mean, I do, I do love that he's, you know, as you called it, skeptical. Uh. The problem, the problem for, from, from my perspective with people like Aaron Rodgers is that they're not actually skeptical. Mm. They just say, okay, anything that this side says, I, I immediately believe the other side. And if, and if you have a conspiracy theory for him, he's like, I'm in. Hmm. That's not skepticism. That's, that's, gull that's gullibility. You, I think you, you gotta be skeptical across the board. Right. However, uh, I, I do love that he's uh, you know, searching for his soul down there hey, in Costa Rica his and opening his mind. He would be, uh, everybody should do ayahuasca. So imagine like, this, if yeah. he did win, he'd be the only politician ever to pass the Graham Hancock test. So Graham Hancock, uh, the famous, uh, what is it, ancient civilizations guy, I've heard him say this multiple times. He was like, I believe that every politician should have like 10 ayahuasca journeys or experiences. So, I mean, I don't know what number Aaron is at, but he would be the only person actually to pass uh, the Graham Hancock test. So maybe that's a reason to vote for him. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, look, the problem that RFK Jr. has is he could very quickly fall into the it's a joke category where people who would seriously consider voting for him would see the Aaron Rodgers pick and would be like, okay, come on, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. I would much more think that somebody like Jesse Ventura, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, any of the folks we listed with genuine political experience would be a lot better because they've got a relatively little, you know, they've got some more name ID. They are, they've got name ID in terms of the political system, but these are like long lawmakers or former presidential candidates who have actual experience kind of within the system. And it would make him, I think, appear more legitimate if he were to pick those it, types. It, it is telling about the way that our culture and our politics have shifted that that he felt like this could be his list. Mm -hmm. In the past, when you've got a third party candidate who's trying to project legitimacy, they go and get some retired general. Uh, who did Ross Perot get? Admiral Admiral Stockdale, who had right. this uh, funny line that in a, that went viral before there was social media in a in a de vice presidential debate where he's like, "Who am I? Why am I here?" Mm -hmm. And it really sounded like he was genuinely curious. Okay, but James Stockdale was yeah. also a hero. I mean, don't forget. Exactly. I mean, this yes. is a, he's a Medal but of Honor you, winner. This Ross is a guy. Ross Perot felt like, like he needed yeah, somebody right. to assure the American people that he would be a good shepherd. Mm -hmm of the national security state and as and as commander in chief, RFK Jr. is like, nah, me and Aaron Rodgers got this. And so that is, I think, indicative of the, the distrust that now exists between the, that American. You just gave me an idea. Uh, he's too old because I just looked it up. Wesley Clark, I feel yeah. like would have been a great pick. Would, he's super yeah. skeptical of the U.S. intelligence agencies, of the security. He has that famous yeah. clip about the post-Iraq discussions about invading Libya mm -hmm. and all that. He really was a peacenik, actually. But 
former four-star general, a guy who really, you know, he's proven his anti-war bona fides, and he's somebody who legitimately has that type of experience. But he's 79, so I think he's way too old. But uh, that said, he <laughs> wouldn't be a bad pick. He's like uh, right in the middle of our That's right. I mean, he is. Yeah, but, but in terms of assuring people, you have a 72-year-old yes. and a, I think RFK 72 and a 79-year-old up against an 81-year-old and what is it, a 78 year old 78 year old uh yeah. not necessarily all that inspiring but uh yeah if wesley clark was younger i feel like he would actually be a great pick he could be stockdale-esque right so anyway my advice to the campaign not that they care or what i say or listen uh would be to pick somebody with some political experience just to make yourself feel more legitimate instead of just a castaway protest vote you don't want to fall into the joke category you want to fall into the serious category the media is already going to try and paint you as a joke as it is so i wouldn't pick a mike rowe or an aaron Rodgers, but well, Tony Robbins. Also, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for name ID. So, we'll see, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I just don't see. Yeah, and what does Aaron Rodgers add? Everybody who likes Aaron Rodgers already likes RFK Jr. Good point. Great yeah. point, actually. That's right. It's not necessarily additive. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to BreakingPoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's BreakingPoints.com.